Hello, I'm Yasser Janab, Interventional Cardiologist in Tehran Heart Center, presenting the case Stenting of Complex Coarctation of Aorta with Aberrant Right Subclavian Artery. Our case is a 24-year-old man with history of hypertension referred for coarctoplasty. Right arm systolic blood pressure was about 100, left arm systolic blood pressure was about 190, lower extremities blood systemic blood pressure was about 110, and his transthoracic echocardiography showed ejection fraction of about 50%, bicuspid aortic valve with moderate aortic insufficiency and severe coarctation of aorta. CT angiography showed postductal aortic coarctation. You can see the coarctation after left subclavian artery and before insertion of right subclavian artery. You can see the anomalous origin of right subclavian artery. In sagittal views, we can see here the origin of right subclavian artery. Also in coronal view, you can see the right subclavian artery origination from descending aorta. There are many different variations in aortic arc. In this patient, we see this variation, which is aberrant right subclavian artery. The right subclavian artery origination from descending aorta after left subclavian artery. For aortography and left heart catheterization, we had accesses from right femoral artery and left and right radial arteries. Ascending aorta, systolic blood pressure was 180, and descending aorta, systolic blood pressure was about 100 millimeters of mercury. Now, the big tail is in aortic root, film ref, radial artery axis, which fills the ascending aorta and its branches. And now, the big tail is in anomalous right subcarbon artery from femoral artery axis and descending aorta. We failed to cross the coarctation from femoral artery axis. The coarctation was crossed through the left radial artery axis and left subclavian artery with the help of V18 wire and cameral support catheter. The wire was snaked in descending aorta to pass an A1 catheter across the coarctation from the below. In the video, you can see A1 from left subclavian artery, that's V18 wire and cameral support catheter from left radial artery axis which was successful to cross the coarctation. After that, the wire, V18 wire, was snared from descending aorta and right femoral artery. In this case, we use V18 guide wire to pass the lesion, which is a 018 peripheral guide wire. Also, there are many different support catheters when you are applying 035 or 018 guide wires. We applied camera support catheter in this case. After passage of the catheter from coarctation to ascending aorta, a suppressive guide wire was played in ascending aorta. After that, predilation with 8 mm balloon was done. We decided to put a sinus XL stent. It is a self-expandable bare metal stent from left subclavian artery over the coarctation and right anomalous subclavian artery. As it is a bare metal stent, there is no a stoppage of flow to right subclavian artery. Afterward, we did post dilation with 16 mm balloon. You can see the final result. After putting the stent, the ascending aorta systolic blood pressure decreased to 140 mm of mercury, while the descending aorta systolic blood pressure was about 135 mm of mercury. Anomalous right subclavian artery is the single most common abnormality of aortic arc vessel. Approximately 1% of patients with postdoctal thoracic aortic coarctation have an associated anomalous right subclavian artery. The threat of these conditions are hypotension of the right, upper, and lower extremities, and hypertension of left, upper extremity. The origin of aberrant subclavian is usually distal but can be proximal to coarctation of aorta. Patients who have coarctation of aorta and anonymous right subclavian artery, retrograde blood flow occurs from the right vertebral artery into the aberrant subclavian artery and descending thoracic aorta. Presence of anomalous right subclavian artery affects the decision making in intervention as well as in surgery. In summary, transcatheter stenting of coarctation of aorta with aberrant right subclavian artery is safe and effective procedure with good outcome. A detailed pre-procedure evaluation and planning is the key to success. Thanks for your watching.